Once upon a time, back in the early 1970s, the Church of Satan sought to standardize its hierarchy structure, employing practices ranging from entrance exams to color-coded medallions to multiple ceremonial titles. Then when things got needlessly complicated and counterproductive, we scrapped what didn't work and we kept what did. Some satanic lessons in both history and practice, today on Satan's Plane. Well, it's not Satan worship, it's Satanism. It's embracing the life-enriching things which have traditionally been given the devil's name. Pride, lust, earthly success, rational self-interest, atheism, humor, nonconformity, science, a passion for living, being selective about whom we love. We don't see these as shameful sins, but empowering ideals. And we also recognize the psychological power and fun of symbolism and aesthetics, so we utilize Satan as mythology's most fitting mascot for what we're about. Satan's Blame, Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. Magister Bill M. here with Satan's Blame. I would like to preface the next topic by ranting a little about something here. There are lots of people who hate the Church of Satan. That's kind of expected, really. With a name like the Church of Satan, we're obviously not looking for social acceptance. We represent Satanism. It's the appropriate name for what we believe. At the beginning of every episode of Satan's Plane, you hear a summary of the reasons for that in the introduction, in my words. It doesn't mean we should never correct misinformation when we see it, but again, we're not looking for mass approval. We're not for the masses. We're Satanists. Uh, but when I say that there are lots of people out there who hate the Church of Satan, I'm not only talking about the Christian zealots. Obviously, they see the word Satan and they hate us. That's fine. Muslims will sometimes send us hate mail or proselytize too. Even the occasional atheist will come by, see the word, assume that we're devil worshippers, and, you know, just as bad of a religion as with the rest, and throw a bunch of straw man arguments against us. But what I find particularly funny about that crowd is that they usually boast that they're all skeptical and critical thinkers who only believe things based on evidence, and yet these atheists ultimately get all their information on Satanism from what Christians say it is. Go figure. So, besides all of those people I've mentioned, there are also the people who call themselves Satanists and hate the Church of Satan. Some of them are devil worshippers or political activists who've been stupidly duped into thinking that Satanism is something that it isn't, and hopelessly take up the label of our religion we established to refer to something completely different. But then you have the occasional idiot who calls himself a Satanist and says he is really following the Satanic Bible, but for some reason has an axe to grind with the Church of Satan. Now, to be fair, you don't need to be an actual member of the Church of Satan in order to be a Satanist. We make this quite clear, even right on the Church of Satan website. No, if you read the Satanic Bible or related literature and you see that it's a reflection of you, with a philosophy you can see yourself living, then fine, you're a Satanist. Some join the Church of Satan after that, some don't, some are still thinking about it. That's fine. But these trolls who have a real axe to grind with the Church of Satan, I've noticed that their complaints, or accusations rather, often take two different forms, and the two forms are contradictory to each other. The first complaint I hear is that the Church of Satan is just outdated, no longer relevant, and it has to evolve with the times. But then the other complaint I hear is that the Church of Satan has changed too much since the early days of Anton LaVey in San Francisco, and it's just lost its way, lost its original vision. Uh, okay, well, which is it? See, it's a catch-22 with these trolls. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. You can't win with these idiots. Either, you know, we haven't evolved enough, or we've evolved too much and lost sight of something. Again, you can't win. Uh, but regarding the complaint that the Church of Satan has to change or evolve, I refer you to Satan's Plane episode number 17, where I address a lot of that. There's always somebody who thinks that the Church of Satan is like the big bad Catholic Church who has gone away from its original teachings, and that they, on the other hand, are the great glorious Martin Luther of Satanism who can step in and reform things, just like Martin Luther did with the Protestant Reformation. Even though, in reality, Satanism is barely over 50 years old, we haven't changed anything about our beliefs. 
can't show us what members could believe then that we can't believe now or vice versa. They can't do that. And the person who claims to know better than us doesn't ever have anything new to offer, it seems. These people who typically never knew Anton LaVey, uh, maybe they weren't even born until after LaVey died in 1997, but somehow they know that they know what he would have wanted better than any of us, including some of us who knew him. So it's just pure narcissism. It's not being your own god. It's just counterproductive pride, solipsism too. You may have heard about those things in the list of satanic sins. So are there things that the Church of Satan used to do that we don't do anymore? Well, the answer is yes. And this gets to today's topic. Now, have we changed our beliefs on anything? No, our religion is still Satanism. Satanism is still Satanism. Last I checked, you can pick up a copy of the Satanic Bible. And aside from the introductions by guest authors, it's the same book that was published word for word in 1969. Some idiots claim that uh, we only started being atheists in 2001 when Peter H. Gilmore became the high priest. And that before that, we actually believed in Satan as a literal being, which makes absolutely no sense. Because we have the Satanic Bible and we have other writings from Anton LaVey over the course of 30 years between when the Satanic Bible was published and when Anton LaVey passed away, about 30 years saying gods are the invention of man. That's right in the Satanic Bible. Satan is a symbol and not a supernatural entity that exists somewhere and so on. We have multiple sources, interviews, writings and other things of, you know, LeVay stating this. Uh, getting back to what I said, what are some of the things that the Church of Satan does differently these days from, say, 40 or 50 years ago? Well, it's one thing to have a religion like Satanism, but it's a different challenge altogether to structure an organization around that in the best way. And over the years, we have taken a practical approach. We try different things, we keep the stuff that works, and we ditch the stuff that doesn't. I know this seems like a radical concept to some people, particularly people who think that a religious organization has to stay exactly the same, or else they're hypocrites or apostates or something. But, you see, Satanism is a religion for the pragmatic, and as Satanists, we're not going to keep doing something just because. And this brings me... To the first example I want to talk about, the grotto system. You know, a grotto, or as some other occult groups would call it, a coven, an established local chapter of the organization. We used to have grottos in the Church of Satan, and now we don't. Why is that? Well, you see, we tried. We tried having them. We were using them for many years. We had them. But uh, then, through our own experience, we found them to be more trouble than they're worth. Too much drama. Too much paperwork and time spent on trying to keep up to date with what each and every grotto is doing. Too many cases where somebody's grotto master status would go to his head and he'd start running things in a stupid way. And here is the notice that was published by the Church of Satan. I think this was published sometime in the early, uh, early to mid-2000s. You can find this on churchofsatan.com. But to read you this notice, quote, over the years, our social laboratory has embraced, disbanded, and revived the use of grottos as a means by which individuals in ge geographic proximity form an association for ritualization, socialization, and the pursuit of various projects. We have now phased out this device once again, since it has become irrelevant in the current exist existing situation for social interaction facilitated by contemporary means for communication. In the past, each local cabal was called a grotto, which reinforced the hidden and mysterious aspect of the Church of Satan. Grottos were designed to exist organically, solely to serve the specialized interests of a particular association of local members. They were never intended to have more than a limited lifespan. When they had outgrown their purpose, they were dissolved. Chartered grotto masters had to regularly report their activities to the Church of Satan, and their charters were subject to yearly renewal. Grotto masters were not considered de facto spokespersons for the Church of Satan, nor were grottos local representations of our church. 
and only a small percentage of our membership ever participated in Grotto activities during the times we offered this mode for interaction. I want to pause right here and comment on that point. I myself was a member when we had grottos, and I myself was never in a grotto. Most other Church of Satan members I knew were not in a grotto either. I even knew some members who lived in the same vicinity as a Church of Satan grotto, but didn't want to be in that grotto for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't like the grotto master, or maybe the sorts of activities that the grotto did were the things the member wasn't particularly interested in. Maybe... A member wanted to do group ritual in that particular grotto wasn't into it, or vice versa. So, you know, maybe they were just happy being registered members and had no interest in talking to other Satanists in a grotto or not. It was also sometimes the case that uh, there was a grotto and they just didn't know about it. Uh, which brings me to the next part of the article, continuing with the article. In the past, if a gr local grotto had a public profile or web presence, then non-members could learn of, its learn of its existence. Many grottos, however, chose to remain underground, fulfilling the nature of that word. With the ubiquity of the Internet and the ease of electronic communication, the Church of Satan has ceased to charter grotto masters, and we no longer offer the formality of forming grottos as a mode for our members to socialize or engage in ritual. Our members who wish it now have ample means to find each other and to discover whether they are compatible for social and ritual gathering. Or, as always, they may opt to keep to themselves. The remaining currently existing active grottos are not publicly visible and continue only in a clandestine manner until they are finally laid to rest. Charters have elapsed for Grotto Masters. It is time for them to set that set aside that responsibility. And that concludes the notice from uh, early to mid-2000s, I believe, on uh, why the Church of Satan dropped Grottos, why we phased it out. As I've said in some past episodes, when Church of Satan members want to network, do things together, well, first of all, in this day and age of the Internet, you're not limited to geography. I mean, look at Radio Free Satan as a perfect example I bring up. Radio Free Satan, these are Church of Satan members who've been coming together from all around the world, really, to create podcasts together. Radio Free Satan, oddly enough, was started by a grotto. It was started by the Mephisto Grotto in Chicago in the year 2000, Church of Satan Grotto. But uh, even then, most of the DJs were from well outside of Chicago. Some were not even in the U.S., so again, we found that we have no need for formal grottos in the Church of Satan. The Satanists who want to hook up locally with other Satanists just to meet each other through the Church of Satan, and you know, th th we do it that way, and we take it from there. So that was all I had to say about grottos. There's another thing that the Church of Satan used to do, then after a few years came to the conclusion of, yeah, this is getting kind of lame, let's try something else. And that brings me to this email I received. This email is from Janina, an active COS member from Finland. And her question was actually about Sigil of Baphomet necklaces. She says that by her understanding, Anton LaVey designed a system where different levels of a hierarchy had their own colored sigils. So like a, a magister or a magistra had this color sigil, somebody else had the Thunderbolt pentagram. And she adds, it seems though that today... The color code does not have the same meaning as it used to have, and all members are able to use the sigil of Baphomet of any color they like. And she asks, as a magister, I was hoping you could satan explain this color code on your podcast. Thank you for a great show. I have listened to all your episodes. Well, thank you for the praise, Janina. And yes, good question. I wrote back to her. And of course, I'm going to I'm going to be answering this topic in much more detail in this episode of satan Explain. But in summary... The short answer is yes, once upon a time, the Church of Satan did use different color-coded sigil Baphomet medallions for members of different ranks. It's You can think of it sort of like how a karate dojo will have different colored belts for different ranks, you know, a white belt when you start, then a yellow, then a green, and whatever, you work up to black. Uh, anyway, we tried this thing with the medallions for a few years in the early 1970s. And then after trying it, decided, eh, this is lame, this isn't really working for us. And so we scrapped the practice and we went back to what we had originally. 
which was, you know, wear whatever color necklace you want. If you like the red ones, wear a red one. If you like the blue ones, wear a blue one. If you don't want to wear a necklace, don't wear a necklace. Simple. So I could end the show <laughs> right here, but I was curious about some of the historical details. You know, what colors did we have for what ranks and when did we start that? When did we get rid of it? And so on. So I reached out to the Church of Satan administration and our own high priestess, Maga Peggy Nadramia, did some digging into the archives and sent back a lot of information. I have two relevant excerpts from the Clovenhof, which was the name of the Church of Satan's internal newsletter. Newsletters, you see, were quite handy in the days before email and websites. Of course, thanks to the internet, we don't need to send out paper newsletters anymore. Once in a while, we do collect some essays together for an issue of The Black Flame and publish that. But again, we don't need print publications for memos and communication in the year 2023. But nevertheless, I have one issue of The Cloven Hoof from 1970 and another from 1972. Now, to give you the summary, the too long didn't listen version of this one, I think in and of itself, this is just some interesting trivia about the Church of Satan history. So that's one reason I'm going to share it. But two, I think, again, this is a great example of something the Church of Satan used to do, but we dropped it for, as you'll see, pretty good reasons. And also three, as you'll see, it also debunks a few false claims about what happened to the Church of Satan in the mid-1970s, as there are some people who, again, weren't even born yet at the time, but want to uh, send some misinformation about that online. So let's go with the announcement from the Cloven Hoof, a March 1970 issue. Here we go. Announcements. Beginning with this issue, you will notice that we have eliminated the eye-catching cover and enclosed your copy in a first-class mail envelope. The reason for this is we have had many letters from members saying they did not receive their copy, or if they did, it was obviously tampered with and probably read before they were received. We trust that this precautionary measure will result in the safer arrival of all issues. So let me pause right there and say, yeah, this right here is another example of something we changed and changed for the better. We used to send out stuff in flashy envelopes or have the words Church of Satan on the return address. But we stopped doing that because, hey, guess what? There were Christians or other self-righteous vandals who would see these envelopes and open them or steal them or something. So we switched to something more discreet. How about that? The newsletter continues saying that, quote, Baphomets will henceforth be worn only of the color designated appropriate to the rank of the individual concerned. An individual may wear the color appropriate to a lower order than that to which he belongs, if he so desires. Members are urged to comply with this directive as soon as possible, but a period of grace will be given. The rules should be enforced from the 1st of March, year 5 Anasatanus. The colors appropriate to the orders of the Church of Satan are as follows. 1. First Order. Regular members. Red Baphomet with black lines. 2. Second Order. Witches and Warlocks. White Baphomet with black lines. 3rd Order. Wizards. Yes, it turns out that at some point in the Church of Satan, uh, we used to have a rank called Wizard. Anyway, for that, it says Black Baphomet with white lines. It should be noted that the Third Order includes the regular priests of Satan, they are the third degree of the third order. Okay, so apparently back then in the Church of Satan, things were broken down by order and then degree, whereas nowadays it's just degree. I'll say more on that later. Four, fourth order, sorcerers. Yeah, another rank term we don't use anymore, sorcerers. And I'm kind of glad we don't. Black medallion with white, uh, plain white inverted pentagram. And finally, Fifth Order, the High Priest, same as with members of the Fourth Order, but with a red lightning bolt through the star. All other colors, such as black and red, will indicate active membership below the level of Witcher Warlock. Cloven Hoof's editor's uh, note says, It was learned from the High Priest that the above is so that one's position in the church might be recognized at a glance the world over, no matter which grotto the member may be attending. 
Church headquarters will make the necessary colors available for $6, but be sure to specify the appropriate colors. So that was part of a 1970 newsletter. I'm pretty sure this was also when the Church of Satan did membership fees differently, doing them as annual dues instead of one lifetime fee, I think. In any case, it's pretty clear the $6 is not for the rank itself, but for the optional jewelry that goes with the rank. And I mention this only because, you see, I've run into idiots here and there who claim that titles are bought in the Church of Satan. That is not how it worked then, and it's not how it works now. I did not buy my Magister title. I paid a one-time lifetime membership fee when I joined the organization back in the 1990s as a registered member. The same fee that you know members were applying for back then. It's still a one-time membership fee today. But when I became a warlock and later a priest and eventually magister, I didn't get a bill in the mail to send the Church of Satan more money for my rank. For that matter, I didn't write to them and say, hey, can I buy a magister title? Uh, again, it uh, doesn't work like that. Maybe those people are thinking of the Church of Scientology. You know, it, it, it's a completely different religion. But their initials are COS, so maybe that's where the confusion arises of uh, thinking, uh, you know, you buy titles in the Church of Satan. Anyway, now from 1970, fast forward two years to the Clovenhoof, Volume 4, Issue 3, March 1972. Quoting from the newsletter, The Church incorporates a total of five degrees, each of which has both an official and a ceremonial title. These degrees are indicated on the chart below. And uh, the chart here is pretty close to the five degrees in the Church of Satan hierarchy today, but I'm going to read you what the chart says line by line, and I'll pause at each line and tell you the different naming conventions we use today in the Church of Satan. So from the 1972 chart, we see the first item, quote, degree first, official title, active member, ceremonial title, apprentice, form of address. Mr., Miss, Mrs. So, as uh, mentioned, each degree had both an official title and ceremonial title. We don't use ceremonial titles anymore. I myself have certainly done lots of group rituals with fellow Church of Satan members, but I have never, ever had one where somebody had to say, hey, you apprentice, go, go, go light the candles now. I mean, is that how it used to work with... Uh, ceremonial titles? I guess so. I don't know. Anyway, today, if you join the Church of Satan just as a registered member, that's technically degree zero. If you fill out the active membership application, send it in, get accepted, you're an active member, degree one. And as I've mentioned before on Satan's Plane, there is absolutely nothing wrong with joining the Church of Satan just as a registered member. I did that myself when I first joined and only later decided to go file for active membership. There are other members who just go with the registered membership and have no desire to go beyond that, don't talk to anybody else, and once again, that's perfectly fine. This is not an initiatory organization like the Boy Scouts where you keep collecting merit badges and try to eventually reach second class and first class and Eagle Scout or whatever, but more on that later. What was true in 1972, in 1972 and is still true today is degree one is called active member. Technically, degree one and upwards is called active membership. As for the form of address, well, you know, the chart says Mr. or Miss, Mrs. Well, I suppose you may very well see Mr. Or Miss, Ms., Mrs., but these days we say citizen for registered membership onward because it's citizen of the infernal empire, short for that, and Satanist for first degree, Satanist so and so. Satanist John Doe, meet citizen Jane Doe, you know, if you're going to be formal about it. I mean, in reality, we're probably just going to say, you know, hey, John, here's Jane, John, Jane, Jane, John. Anyway, I'm just listing the technicalities. Don't take what I'm saying as some sort of sacred protocol because we don't really have that. Anyway. Continuing now with the 1972 chart, on to second degree. Degree second, official title, brother or sister of the cauldron. Ugh, glad we dropped that. Ceremonial title, warlock or witch. Form of address, Mr. Miss, Mrs. So nowadays in the Church of Satan, we call the second degree witch or warlock, depending on the gender. 
And we use that in the form of address too. You know, Warlock Robert J. Luthold, meet Witch Jane Doe, or whatever. Next in the list, degree third, official title, priest or priestess of Mendes, ceremonial title, wizard for male, enchantress for female, form of address, reverend for male or priestess for female. So aside from the ceremonial title of wizard or enchantress, that's the rest is pretty much all the same today. Again, we don't refer to somebody as a wizard or enchantress in the ritual chamber, chamber if they have a priesthood title, but degree three is priest or priestess, um, reverend or priestess or priest for that matter as, as the form of address. David Ingram, for example, is a church of Satan priest, reverend David Ingram, you could say. You could use priest as well, I guessed, but uh, I use reverend for either sex as well as, you know, priestess for female, whichever. Now, a couple of quick things I want to mention before we move on further down the list. There is at least one other context in Satanism I can think of where you will see the terms witch and warlock, and that is when you're talking about the concept of lesser magic. The Satanic Bible uses that uh, th those terms. When a female Satanist is practicing lesser magic, we would say she is employing her skills as a Satanic witch, when a man is doing the same, we would call him Satanic Warlock. And obviously we have the books, Satanic Witch, Satanic Warlock, on that same theme. I know Wiccans and other witch groups avoid the word Warlock because they claim it's an evil word and that it means Oathbreaker or something like that, even though there's seemingly no proof of this. Regardless, we're Satanists, so uh, you know we like the evil stigma words and we make that work for us. So we use the term Warlock, just like we use the term Witch. In any case, that's warlock and witch with a lowercase w in the context of lesser magic. So it's not to be confused with the clerical rank in the Church of Satan as an organization, degree two witch or warlock with a capital W. And likewise with the term priest or priestess in the Satanic Bible, we see that when a person is conducting a ritual and is leading it, the ritual role of that person is priest or priestess. That's just in the context of the ceremony. And again, not to be confused with the clerical title of priest or priestess with a capital P given to a Church of Satan member. Anyway, these are just some technicalities on the multiple uses of the terms witch, warlock, priest, and priestess, which I wanted to mention. Speaking of gendered words, I've seen at least one or two people whine... Uh, the Satanic Bible doesn't take into account non-binary people. Well, for crying out loud, name a book over 50 years ago which does. Just stop whining, pick some non-binary word that works for you in that context, and do what you gotta do. I mean, if you want to substitute new 21st century pronouns in a ritual, then do it. Nobody cares. Just do it. Though I would say that if your main strategy to getting what you want in life is to guilt trip people and demand special treatment, then maybe you're not really a lesser magic user after all. Maybe you're a psychic vampire. Something to think about. Anyway, next, in the chart from 1972, degree, fourth, official title, Magister Magnus slash Templi slash Caverni, ceremonial title, Sorcerer for male, sorceress for female, form of address, sir or lady, or doctor if qualified. So that's the 1972 description of degree four. Well, as I'm sure most of you know by now, we've simplified degree four to magister or magistra. You'll hear an example at the beginning of every so every uh, you know episode of Satan's Plane. Magister Bill M. That's me. So that's the form of address too. Now, those of you who listen to my other podcast, The Devil's Mischief, which you absolutely should, by the way, you may hear me or uh, recordings on that show referring to me as Reverend Bill M. And a lot of the reason for that is, to be honest, uh, because I made a lot of those recordings when my rank was still priest, before I became a magister, and I didn't feel like re-recording anything. But, but, it is still technically correct and here's why. A lot of Satanists don't seem to know this, but technically, anybody from priest on upward can be addressed as reverend in the Church of Satan. We even say this 
on the Church of Satan website. So I had somebody once um, online, or maybe it was in person, um, address me as Reverend Bill M. And somebody else came and said, no, 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 he's not a reverend, he's a magister. You you just demoted him by saying that. And I said, no, it's it's not a demotion. You can address me as reverend. I'm still a part of the priesthood of Mendes, even if I'm, I'm a magister, so, you know. You could say Reverend Bill M. instead of Magister Bill M. No big deal anyway if you mistitle me by mistake, because uh, I gotta confess, I make this mistake myself all the time with other Satanists. I'll dress somebody as a warlock when they're really a priest, or as priestess when they're actually a magistra, and, and I forgot that they got an advance in rank, or vice versa, sometimes mistakenly calling somebody by a higher rank. <laughs> Sorry, folks, but yeah, I talk with lots and lots of Satanists, you know, lots of Church of Satan members. And after a couple of decades of that, I don't always automatically remember what everybody's rank is. Come to think of it, maybe this is why we had color-coded sigils back in the day <laughs> for the different ranks. It would be like name tags, you know, that could make it easier. But as I'll explain later, we got rid of that color-coded stuff for good reasons. So to finish up the list from 1972, we have the final degree. Degree, fifth official title, Magister Satanus, ceremonial title, Magus, form of address, doctor. Now, some of you may be wondering what the hell doctor is doing in there. Back in the day when Anton LaVey was alive, people addressed him sometimes as Dr. LaVey or Doc by his close friends. It was basically a nickname or a term of endearment. Anton LaVey didn't have a PhD from a formal inst institution. Though, as uh, my friend Magister Sass points out, The Satanic Witch, that book in and of itself has a huge enough bibliography that you could consider that book a PhD thesis anyway. Plenty of people have gotten PhDs from institutions for writing far less. And I see people now and then who think that, you know, this is a big gotcha moment, though. Oh, Anton LaVey was not a real doctor. He didn't have a PhD. Oh, checkmate, Church of Satan. Well, I don't think Dr. Dre is a real doctor either. Or Dr. Vincent Schetz. Or that, you know, I, I don't think Duke Ellington was a real duke. Or that uh, Queen Latifah rules a monarchy somewhere. So, uh, who cares? It's a name, get over it. So what is degree five called these days? Degree five these days is Magus for male or Maga for female. The Church of Satan's high priest is Peter H. Gilmore. He is degree five, so he's addressed formally as Magus Peter H. Gilmore. Our high priestess is Peggy Nudramia. She is of degree five as well. And while you may see her still addressed many places as Magistra, she is technically now Maga Peggy Nudramia. Degree five, not degree four. I've seen some conspiracy theorists jump on that term in recent years. Maga, the female equivalent of Magus. Did you know that Maga stands for Make America Great Again, but Maga is also the name of a Church of Satan title? Is that a coincidence? Yes, it is. Shut up and get a life. So what about doctor as a term of endearment? Does anybody in the Church of Satan address Peter H. Gilmore as doctor? No, we don't. We do, however, have a nickname we've bestowed upon him, and that nickname is not Doctor, but Maestro. And uh, that's because back in 2016, when we were celebrating 50 years of the Church of Satan, one of our members proposed bestowing the nickname of Maestro to Magus Gilmore, because besides being the high priest of the Church of Satan, he's also a musician and a composer. Anton LaVey was called the Doctor, so... It, it was proposed, let's call our current high priestess the maestro, and he accepted that. Now, a lot of Satanists assume that degree five is synonymous with being high priest or high priestess, and strictly speaking, that's not the case. Technically, technically, the role of high priest or high priestess is a leadership role that is separate from the degree system. It's the same thing with um, agent. We have that title role in the Church of Satan called agent, where that person can be a media representative without necessarily being in the priesthood. Likewise, back when we used to have grottos, there was the title grotto master. Again, not a rank within the hierarchy, but rather a role somebody could have. 
We also say in the Church of Satan literature that the role of high priest or high priestess can only go to somebody, quote, of degree four or higher. Now, the bottom line is that the organization is still only a little over 50 years old. And quite frankly, through that history, we simply haven't had many high priests or high priestesses. We haven't had many maguses or magas. LeVay originally reserved degree five for himself, and when Blanche Barton became high priestess after he, after he died, she was degree four. When Peter H. Gilmore became high priest, Barton made him degree five. And when Peggy Nadramia became high priestess, she was degree four, magistra Peggy Nadramia, but on her 20th anniversary of being the high priestess, uh, Mangus Gilmore declared her degree five. So... As of right now, yeah, coincidentally, the degree five position is synonymous with the high priest and high priestess, coincidentally enough. Now, all of these ranks and titles I've been mentioning are essentially honorary titles when you get right down to it. I just went into the details because I wanted to give you a bit of Church of Satan history and, you know, what has or hasn't changed since this is a topic that comes up now and then, and I like to be thorough. But uh, the titles themselves don't bestow some kind of feudal authority over other members. You know, if, if you're a Church of Satan member and I walk up to you at a convention or something and I say, I am Magister Bill M., you should automatically revere me and go get me a beer right now because I am a Magister and you are merely an active member. Well, I mean, your correct response would be, no, Bill, fuck off. I'm a Satanist and my God is me, not you, no matter what your title is. For that matter, I don't have some sort of clerical authority where a Satanist is maybe planning a Satanic ritual and thinking, hmm, do I use a Nokian key number 10 or number 14 for this ritual? Well, I need to ask an authority on the topic. I will need to consult a Satanic priest or magister to answer this question because only they know the true answer, and they have the last word. No, no, it's, that's not how this works either. I mean, I would like to think that as somebody who has been given the title of Magister, I'm a little more knowledgeable and better at explaining Satanism than, say, some teenager on TikTok who just found a pirated copy of the Satanic Bible three weeks ago. But, uh, you know, again, it's not like the Catholic Church where a priest can perform the Black Mass, but a satanic warlock can't do anything higher than gong duty or some bullshit like that. Anyway, hopefully you get my point. Speaking of how not to do things, once again, I can't stress this enough. The Church of Satan is not an initiatory organization. It's not like you join the Church of Satan and you say, I'm going to study and do these projects and take these exams, and then in two years, I become a warlock. And then I take more tests and do these other rituals. And then two years after that, I become a priest. And uh, no, no, it doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, though, back in the 1970s, early to mid-1970s, all of this craziness with red pentagrams and blue pentagrams and sorcerers and apprentices and written exams and this and that, well, it was starting to turn the Church of Satan into such an initiatory organization. You had people who were more concerned about getting the next title than actually living Satanism. And that was when we put the brakes on and said, hey, this stuff is getting ridiculous. It's not working for us anymore. Time to clean house. Toss what doesn't work. And it doesn't have much to do with Satanism and keep what does. And that's exactly what happened. More on this when we come back from the break. You are listening to Satan's Plane. You are listening to Satan's Plane. Real Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. For questions, comments, and correspondence, send an email to bill at satansplain.com. The two preachers used to ride their bicycles to church every Sunday down the country, and every Sunday they'd stop on the side of the road and chat. One Sunday, the preacher, one of the preachers was walking, the other was riding. He said, Well, what happened to your bicycle? He said, You know, somebody in my congregation must have stole my bicycle. He said, I don't know what to do to get it back. The other reverend said, well, if you want to get it back, when you go to church this Sunday, when you're preaching, say the Ten Commandments. When you get to the commandment which says, thou shalt not steal, ever who stole your bicycle, feel guilty and bring it back to you. Sure enough, the next Sunday, both preachers arrived on the bicycle and they stopped to chat again. 
I said, Rev, I see you got your bike back. He said, did you do it like I told you? The other Reverend said, yes, I did. I said the Ten Commandments, and when I got the commandment which says, thou should not commit adultery, I remember where I left my bicycle. <laughs> That sacrilegious comedy hors d'oeuvre is from The Devil's Mischief. Listen to The Devil's Mischief on RadioFreeSatan.com. Magister Bill M. here with Satan Splain. Visit the official website of the show, SatanSplain.com. There you can listen to all the past Satan Splain episodes. You can also listen to Satan Splain on Stitcher, Spotify, Audible, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and more. You can find some of those direct links handy on SatanSplain.com. Satan's Plane is also on social media, on Twitter, or on uh, YouTube, Facebook. Give the show a like and a subscribe or a follow or whichever it is for whichever platform. Because that helps me out. And of course, for questions and comments, you can email me, bill at satansplain.com. That is the email address. Before we continue on today's topic, I've got a satanic anecdote here from Joe. And I was going to save it to the end of the episode, but let's do it now instead. Cue the Satanic Dote theme song. Satanic Anecdotes. Satanic Dotes. This Satanic Dote is from Joe. Joe says he is an active member of the Church of Satan and recently discovered Satan's Plane is, and uh, is enjoying the show immensely. And he says he has a couple of Satanic Dotes to share, which have a certain t-shirt in common. Joe explains, I have a black t-shirt, surprise, which has a rendering of Anton LaVey's head. It is a red decal with patches of black pigment from the shirt showing through to create his beard, eyebrows, eyes, etc. And he attached a photo. But yeah, basically Anton LaVey's image of his head on a t-shirt. Joe continues, one day I wore this shirt to the grocery store. An employee approached me and asked me if the face on my shirt was Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. Without thinking, I said, no, it is Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan. The employee responded by saying, oh, and took a step back from me. I could tell by the look on his face he was thoroughly creeped out. And after an awkward silence, we went about our business. On another occasion, I wore the shirt to work. A co-worker asked me who the face on the shirt was. This guy had a shaved head and a goatee beard and had his head shaped similar to LeVay's. So I said, it's you, man. This produced a chuckle. And then he said, no, no, no seriously, who is it? I said, Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. To which he replied, oh, cool. So thank you, Joe, for that pair of satanic doubts. Before the break, we looked at the way hierarchy positions in the Church of Satan had their own color-coded sigils and the like. To briefly sum up what those were in 1972, a little different from 1970. First degree, sigil Baphomet is black against a red background, ceremonial robes completely black. Second degree sigil is black against a white background, ceremonial robes all black. Now the third degree, I didn't actually see any details of this in the 1972 letter. Maybe it was just omitted. But fourth degree recipients wear the pentagram of Satan. Now it turns out that this is just a plain white pentagram star floating in a circle against a black background. So that's what pentagram of Satan was apparently. Ceremonial robes are black with blue trim. Fifth degree, recipients wear the pentagram of Satan in silver metal, but without the background, and their ceremonial robes are black with scarlet trim. And finally, the high priesthood of the Church of Satan, while not a degree itself, will be held by either a Magister Magnus or a Magister Satanus. There, the insignia of the office is a lightning bolt superimposed upon the insignia of degree. Members of the Council of Nine are identified by a special medallion bearing the seal of the Order of the Trapezoid. And you can see that uh, seal, the Order of the Trapezoid picture, in some uh, some of the pictures on churchofsatan.com. It is trapezoidal shaped. And later in the year, July 1972, some sources say that the medallions being sold included white, red, black, and blue, and then royal purple for the fifth degree. Then... 
in October 1974 that there was an issue of the cloven hoof. The five colors with corresponding degree numbers as above are listed for sale. You could order them through the newsletter. Once again, I mention all this just for two main reasons. One, because it's part of Church of Satan history that I didn't know about myself and Janina, who wrote to me, didn't know about. And I'm sure most of you listeners out there didn't know about. One thing I have, however, long read about is that the Church of Satan made some changes in the mid-1970s. And now I, when I see examples like this, I can see why that was the case. And that brings me to the second reason I bring this up. Like I said, I think this is a perfect example of something the Church of Satan tried, found that it was getting silly and out of hand, and eventually we dropped it because, you know, we, we found it wasn't working. We tried something else. To, uh, so to any people out there who think that we should go back to things the Church of Satan used to do just because, I, I don't know what to tell you. I wouldn't want to go back to all this sort of, uh, you know, colored nonsense. Anyway, here is an excerpt from the hierarchy page over on churchofsatan.com. So from today, we're back in the year 2023. Anton LaVey formulated a system of degrees during the early years of the Church of Satan, as such was a general practice in many prior social and esoteric organizations. However, the criteria for elevation in our church were based not on mysticism or occultism, but on knowledge of practical subjects beyond Satanism, and even more than that, on the application of such wisdom towards measurable ends. Dr. LaVey experimented by mandating the specific colors for medallions, which could be worn by each member according to degree. Key word, I would say, there is experimented. And for a time, written exams were given to assess a member's readiness for a particular level. In the mid-1970s, it became clear that many members had become obsessed with jockeying for position, being overly concerned with their place in the organization rather than working towards advancing in the world outside. This was contrary to our kind of philosophy's emphasis on tangible personal progress. And so after that point, the existence of the degrees was de-emphasized in Church of Satan literature, and formulaic methods for recognition were jettisoned. Today we maintain our traditional degrees, but these should not be seen as initiatory steps, which are expected of members. The Church of Satan is not an initiatory organization. The article goes on to explain most of the same points that I said earlier, that there's no requirement for members to go beyond registered membership. There's no requirement for members to even talk to other members, much less hang out with them or compete. But uh, let's read a little more about this problem at the time of people jockeying for position. So next here is an excerpt from churchofsatan.com from the history pages that we have there. So think about uh, 1970 or so. This is where we're talking. Quote, after a few years, LeVay began cutting back on the administrative demands on his time, concentrating his energies on his own projects more than on public relations and personally ministering to his ever increasing flock. Following LeVay's plan, it was time to, quote, stop performing Satanism and start practicing it. The Church of Satan was having its desired impact on the outside world, and LeVay wanted to encourage new directions among the members rather than siphoning off the best energy for compulsory performance of rituals. The period of actual above-ground activity confined to LeVay's Victorian digs was relatively brief, but long enough to do irreparable damage to established religion. After that original blast, LeVay remembered, there was no need for the ongoing public spectacle and outrage of an, an inverted Catholic mass anymore. Christianity was becoming weaker every day. That was just beating a dead horse. There were plenty of other sacred cows to attack, and that's what keeps Satanism vital and thriving. In 1970, rituals and lectures conducted by LeVay and open to the public ceased. All weekly public ceremonies in the Black House stopped in 1972. Responsibility for satanic activities was shifted to the dozens of Church of Satan grottos established around the world, with Central Grotto, as LeVay's original Black House was designated, 
serving only to screen, approve, and direct potential members in the Church of Satan. To pause, uh, pause the article here for a moment, we, the Church of Satan, get asked now and then by journalists, oh, can we go see you guys do a ritual? And our answer is no, we're not going to just put on a show for people who aren't even participating in the ritual. And uh, when Anton LaVey was doing this sort of thing in his own home several years, you know, for several years, I could imagine that getting tiring after a while and wanting to move on. I mean, I, I hate it when I just have to, you know, have somebody in my house to go look at the radiator. <laughs> Continuing with the article, by 1975, a reorganization had taken place. And those few who were counterproductive to LeVay's satanic ideals, who are more interested in what Anton LeVay calls phase one Satanism, for example, group rituals, uh, blaspheming Christianity in a rigidly structured limited way, were phased out. And yes, by the way, you may have heard that term, phase one Satanism or phase one Satanists, and that's what it refers to. There's nothing wrong, of course, with uh, you know group rituals or religion bashing. I like doing these things as much as the next satanist but it's not all that the church of satan is about because it's not what satanism is limited to you, you know you got to take things beyond that continuing with his intensely elitist attitude anton was incensed to see his creation degenerating into a satan fan club where the weakest least innovative members were buoyed up with time and attention at the expense of the most productive most satanic members at a time when other leaders might have turned over command to someone else in disgust, taken advantage of the more tempting doors, then opening to him, such as acting, directing, or more writing, LeVay was bound by the loyalty he felt for the organization he had started. Consequently, LeVay devised a diabolical way to clean house, which eventually eliminated much of the dross and administrivia that LeVay felt was obscuring the organization's true identity. The grotto system was loosely maintained, but no longer strictly managed through the central grotto. LeVay wanted his Church of Satan to evolve into a truly Kabbalistic underground rather than degenerating into a long-running public pageant of a or a Satan pen pal club. Putting the brakes on the lodge hall activities, LeVay emphasized that a person's status within the Church of Satan should reflect his status outside the organization. Highest-ranking people in the outside world should hold a commensurate position within the group, since LeVay considered their material, creative, or social success as the truest means of magical prowess. Anton also shifted the organizational focus to those who could benefit the church in a substantial way through who and what they were, not just feeling compelled to spend, spend large chunks of time with non-productive psychic vampires, no matter how dedicated. LeVay said, there always needs, there always has to be a fair exchange. I could see that many people were joining our ranks simply because it was a guarantee of friends, or because they wanted the gl glory of passing tests to earn degrees, much like the grand poobahs who take off their robes and vestments and become another local nobody again outside of their lodge. They were getting more spook appeal, out of being members of the Church of Satan, then we were getting esteem from having them among our membership. As an organization grows, group activities only cause contention, drain vital energy that could be better applied elsewhere, and eventually become counterproductive. Teaching people that they're all right and society is all wrong, that the only ones who really understand them and that they relate to are within the group is damaging in the long run. It only reinforces their own inability to deal with larger, the larger world. I wanted to create a forum, a loosely structured cabal, for the productive aliens, not misfits who need to depend on a group. After the reorganization, I was free to be more selective. I would much rather attract and lend support to those individuals who use their alienation, just as most leaders are usually different or distinctive in some way. Groups encourage dependence on beliefs and delusions to reinforce their omnipotence. Instead of fostering self-sufficiency and honest skepticism, I saw my group laps, lapsing into blind belief 
an unhealthy anthropomorphism. That is not what I intended, and I had to make moves to get the Church of Satan back on track. And to further quote Anton LaVey and the Church of Satan from that time, here are some notes from the Cloven Hoof, this time a Cloven Hoof newsletter from January 1976. So, as I've been saying, we eventually scrapped the use of uh, colored sigils. And so let's hear what we actually, what was actually said to everybody in the Church of Satan, the Clovenhof Newsletter, 1976. As a result of the many reasonable requests and a great deal of consideration, we are pleased to announce a return to our original policy regarding color choice of Baphomet amulets. In the early days of the Church of Satan, one's individual preference determined the color of the amulet worn. It was not uncommon to see a Baphomet medallion carved of wood or ivory, etched in various metals, embossed in leather, or fired in enamels of red, black, lavender, orange, gray, yellow, or any other color, regardless of degree held within the Church of Satan. To us that made sense, for it was truly satanic in that it encouraged individuality and contributed to one's well-being through compatibility with certain colors or substances. Some members had different Baphomets to wear with different outfits, we were pleased with the results, both visually and doctrinally. Then, as all organizations must, we entered a period of increasing standardization, during which one-degree members were obligated to wear red amulets, two-degree witches and warlocks wore white, the priesthood bore black sigils, and those higher wore blue. It served an important purpose in showing us just how far Satanists can be institutionalized, Soon, in lieu of breaking the rules, the demon of individuality surfaced by way of supplementary insignia added to the regulation Baphomet medallions. And the supreme irony was that many high-level members who could wear, for example, a blue Baphomet chose to wear a red one or a white one, simply because they felt more akin to those colors, or often wore ensembles complementary to them. Replies were similar when degrees came up. Yes, I know my Baphomet is that of a first-level member, but I like it. It goes well with my black sweater, and I know that I'm a magistra and can prove it if need be. Now you can be the first Satanist on your block to sport a brilliant orange Baphomet. We are offering the same quality workmanship from the same manufacturer of our highest degree amulets. And the letter goes on with uh, instructions on, you know, where you could get these sigil necklaces. Again, this was 1976. It was before you could... Just jump onto satanme.com and order a medallion. I am going to finish now by reading the summary from that other article I had started reading about the Church of Satan hierarchy from churchofsatan.com and how we do things today. The administration watches the progress of qualified members and may choose to grant recognition to outstanding individuals based on demonstrated excellence in the understanding and communication of satanic theory, coupled with significant potent practices in the arena of the real world, which have produced superior achievements. People naturally and quite organically rise to particular levels, and we may take note at our discretion. This is meritocracy at work. So if you are so inclined, keep us updated on your accomplishments so that your progress may be noted. And that concludes my long talk about colored sigils, the Church of Satan hierarchy, and stuff the Church of Satan used to do, which we no longer do, for sensible and practical reasons. And it also concludes this episode of Satan's Plane. Thank you for listening. Until next time, hail Satan. You have been listening to Satan's Plane. For more information about the show, visit the official website at satansplane.com. And for more information about Satanism itself, visit churchofsatan.com. This episode, copyright 2023, Magister Bill M.